Depression has been creeping into my life during the last few months. It has finally become clear, even to me, that life on this planet is a proposition with little time remaining. In a directly related note, it has finally become clear, even to me, that a coordinated defamation campaign has succeeded in destroying my public life. A man I met a few years ago in Florida who claims to be an NSA contracted spy who has been tracking me for many years. He goes by the name of Mark Austin, although his name is almost certainly Mark Justin. He goes by Mark Austin on social media and also email. I don't know if he's a spy. After all, if he's a spy, he's paid to lie. If he's not a spy, then he's lying about being a spy. Here's a little bit of the backstory regarding Mr. Justin. He wrote to my good friend Kevin Hester shortly after Kevin hosted me on a speaking tour in New Zealand. Here's the email message received by Kevin on December 16th, 2016. Quote, Thank you for hosting Guy McPherson. I'm afraid that the NSA is about to get much tougher on him and a list of others, as Trump and Rex Tillerson have asked for specifics. Sorry, I'm only the messenger. End quote. The organized defamation campaign that effectively removed me from public service was completed within eight months. That same defamation campaign destroyed my relationships with family and friends, as I have described via video in this space with an episode released February 10th, 2022, titled Science Snippets, It's Not About Me. Because it's not about me. In any event, I wrote to Mark Justin via email on February 16th, 2022, quote, Congratulations, Mark. The security slash surveillance network won by removing me from public service. The people lost. The confusion and chaos as we lose habitat for humans will be one terrible result. End quote. I have received no response from Mr. Justin, who usually responds promptly to my messages. As a result of the ongoing defamation campaign and its results for my personal life, I've been down in the dumps for the last few weeks. I've heard the phrase down in the dumps since I was a kid. I decided to research the origin of the phrase to take my mind off my my troubles. The dumps did not refer to a location. Rather, in the dumps was a common medieval expression meaning dejection, melancholy, or depression. It dates at least to Sir, Sir Thomas More's A Dialogue of Comfort Against Tribulation, published in 1529. Shakespeare and others used the phrase frequently from the 16th century onward. That's the origin of in the dumps. On the other hand, down in the dumps was described more than 200 years later in Francis Gross's classical dictionary of the vulgar vulgar tongue, which was published in 1785. Gross defined down in the dumps as low-spirited or melancholy. He claimed, incorrectly, that the phrase might have been derived from Dumpos, a king of Egypt who died of melancholy. There are a few problems associated with this conclusion, including that there was never a king with this name in Egypt, much less one who died from melancholy. Still, it got me thinking, how bad would my life have to be for me to die of melancholy? You might want to think about that too. How sad would your life have to be for you to die from it? After all, Abundant evidence indicates that the odds against any one of us even being here in physical form are truly astronomical. And yet, here we are. To quote the British Professor Emeritus of Evolutionary Biology, Richard Dawkins, quote, In the teeth of the stupefying odds, it is you and I that are privileged to be here, privileged with eyes to see where we are and brains to wonder why. End quote. This line from Dawkins helps me through the occasional dark night. It also helps me when I receive messages such as this one from a friend I've not yet met who lives in South America. Quote, There is so little time left. I am focusing on loving every minute I have. Each one is a gift. Your priceless efforts have given me the acceptance that I needed to live every day to the fullest. End quote. My South American friend then referred to a conference organized by the NGO Committee on Mental Health, Inc., titled Knowing and Not Knowing About the Climate Crisis Through the Lens of Trauma and Dissociation. She included a link to a paper in the peer-reviewed journal, The Lancet Planetary Health, from December 2021. The paper is titled Climate Anxiety in Children and Young People and Their Beliefs About Government Responses to Climate Change, a Global Survey. 
The conference and the peer-reviewed paper focused on the negative emotions expressed by young people about climate change. The peer-reviewed paper included results from a survey of 10,000 16 to 25 year olds in 10 countries. Dominant feelings included sadness, anxiety, anger, powerlessness, helplessness, and guilt. My South American friend also referred to a book by Dr. Sally Weintraub, Psychological Roots of the Climate Crisis. Published April 8, 2021, the book's subtitle is Neoliberal Exceptionalism and the Culture of Uncare. It tells a story of a fundamental fight between caring and uncaring imaginations. In this book, Weintraub argues that we need to stop colluding with exceptionalism. As I've been pointing out for many years, with a focus on American exceptionalism, we must abandon the notion that we are, individually and collectively, too special to die and too special to go extinct. The uncaring ideas promoted in politics and culture, as exemplified by Ayn Rand, take us down the wrong path. They lead directly to the scammers that abound in our society. These scammers are encouraged and probably created by contemporary society. As Exhibit A, I've been betrayed, plagiarized, and defamed so many times I've lost track. Sadly, I'm no longer surprised. Justice is far too expensive for me. I've paid tens of thousands of dollars to attorneys. The one worthy lawyer who befriended me and was working pro bono to help me slip on a dock and subsequently died in the Bahamas in late, night, in late 2020. In other words, my public life has been destroyed because I've been honest and forthright. Scammers and liars continue to accumulate privileges unimpeded by the facts. I can say with great certainty that I will never be invited to speak on tour again. I will rarely, if ever, be interviewed by the corporate media. This is not about me, of course. It's about the nearly 8 billion people who will die confused and angry as habitat for our species slips away. Please help me as I attempt to warn a few of these people that time is both short and precious. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing to this channel. If you subscribe, please click the bell so you will be notified about future videos. Feel free to share this video. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching.